Hey, welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at JS8 Call. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. It's been a couple of years since we've taken an in-depth look at JS8 Call, some of the settings that I prefer to use, and kind of how the overall application works. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and dig into this. Before we jump into explaining all of the buttons and the layout of the main application, let's take a look at a few settings. So come up to File and click on Settings. You'll be presented with this screen here. This has just got some basic details in the very beginning, your call, your grid, some of the call sign groups if you're interested in that, and we may go into that uh, in another video in a little bit more detail. It also gives you some of the pre-assigned buttons right here, your CQ, your reply message, your station info, and your station status. So you want to take a look at those. You can see, uh, for instance, the station info. I've got uh, the radio that I'm using, the power, and the antenna. Some things that are more important here are going to be found under the networking and auto reply tab. Let's go ahead and click on that tab. There's two main boxes on this particular tab, actually three, that I want to look at. First is pause heartbeat transmission while in a QSO. I definitely want a check mark there because I don't want to be in the middle of a QSO with another operator. And then the station auto respond uh, or send out a heartbeat during that transmission and kind of interrupt my QSO. So I do want a checkbox there. The next one that I definitely want a checkbox by or a check mark by is turn on auto reply at startup. I always want that active as soon as I fire up JSA call. The next one right below that is one that is checked by default but I don't want this to happen, and that's to ask me for a confirmation before sending auto-reply transmissions. So if somebody asks me for a signal-to-noise report, or I hear another heartbeat, uh, if this box is checked, it's going to pop up a window, and I have to click OK before it will go ahead and send out that auto-reply. So I leave a ch or I uncheck that box so that I don't have to click OK for those auto replies. Now let's go ahead and click on the reporting tab right up at the top. And there's a few different things that I want to be certain is turned on. The first two boxes under network services, make sure you've got a check mark by those. What that does is if uh, someone sends out their grid or they want to send a message through the APRS system, uh, this allows your station to receive that message and then go ahead and send that over the internet to the APRS IS network. And this is really a valuable service for the community at large, so I recommend everyone check both of those boxes. Down below that, you will find the API section. This section is helpful if you want to use applications like uh, JS8 Call Utilities, which is uh, developed by M0 IAX. That application just helps us to compose different types of messages that we can then send using JSA Call. And if you want to use something like that, right here you need to put a check mark by allow. Oh, let me get my cursor out of the way. You need to put that check mark right there by allow setting station information from the API. And then I like to go ahead and put a check mark by. Uh, enable UDP server API and accept UDP request. I go ahead just for good measure and do the same thing for the TCP settings uh, that are found just below the UDP settings. Down below that, if you use some of the other logging software, uh, N3 
FJP or N1MM, you might want to go ahead and set those up as well. As those applications are a nut available for the Raspberry Pi, I don't mess with those. Now, the other two tabs that will definitely be important to you is going to be your radio tab and your audio tab. Both of those are used to configure JSA call to work with your particular radio. We're not going to cover setting that up for your radio though in this particular video. So now that we've got the settings out of the way, let's just go ahead and click OK and jump back to the main application. Now let's kind of walk through this screen uh, starting in the top left corner. You will see the frequency that you're operating on currently. If you've got rig control enabled, this will update and you can change bands by simply left clicking on the frequency. It'll pop up a list of recommended frequencies. You can come down through here and then click on one of those to go ahead and change to that particular frequency. Right below that, you will see the offset that we're using in the waterfall. So if you look down on the bottom, you can see that I'm just below 2000 on the waterfall. This right here tells you exactly where we're located. So if you wanted to move to exactly 2000, you can left click on this. You'll get a little box that pops up asking you for your offset in Hertz. We'll go ahead and enter 2000 there. Now, as soon as I click OK, you'll be able to watch the cursor in the waterfall jump to the new location. And you can see that it's lined up now exactly on 2000 Hertz. This is useful if you want to line up exactly with another station in the waterfall. The middle of the top black bar there just gives us some station information. My call, my grid, the current time, and then in parentheses, you see the current time offset. So if your system time is just a little bit off, JS8 Call will make an adjustment so that you can still get good decodes and be decoded by other stations. Directly below that is just the date and time. Now, let's look at the buttons to the right of that. We've got six of those up in the top left corner. You can click on the receive and transmit buttons to turn those on and off. So they'll go from green to gray when we're not receiving and the same thing for the transmit. You want both of those to be set to green if you're wanting to both receive and transmit. Now, just to the right of that, uh, you'll see the button that the blue button that's got a lot of different information in it. It's basically telling me what my settings are at this current moment. If we right click on that button, we get a lot of different options. So the first uh, four things you see up here is the particular mode that we're working in. From slow to turbo, the modes get progressively faster, but we need better band conditions to decode turbo mode versus the slow mode. So if you've got bad band conditions, you might want to uh, move to the slow mode. If you've got really good band conditions, uh, good propagation between you and the station you're having a QSO with, you might want to consider moving up to fast or turbo. The next section down is uh, the decoder sensitivity and I keep mine set at four decode passes. Now, keep in mind, I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, one of the eight gigabyte models. If you're running this on a Raspberry Pi 3, you might need to move that down to three times uh, for your decode passes. It might make the program run a little smoother on the older Raspberry Pi 3. Right below that, I've got a check mark by this, and that just says enable simultaneous decodes of all speeds. So my station is set to decode incoming signals regardless of which mode they're running in. Whether they're running in slow, fast, turbo, or normal, my station is set to decode all of those. Next down below that, I've got all three of mine, uh, check marks beside all three of mine. And this just enables or disables different things like auto reply, the heartbeat network, and enabling heartbeat acknowledgements. The first one in the bottom row is spot. 
and we can turn spotting on or off. Now we set this up a minute ago under settings, uh, but we can also go ahead and disable that by just left clicking on it. I like to leave that on so that if someone sends out a grid report or if someone tries to use uh, the APRS system with JS8 call and my station hears that, it'll go ahead and report that through the internet. So I like to leave that one turned on all of the time. The next one beside that is the log, and that's simply used to log different QSOs. The last one that we've got up there in the top right is the tune button. This one is uh, helpful when you, if you need to check uh, maybe your SWR for your antenna, or you need to set your audio levels for JSA call. If you click on the tune button, it will send out a constant carrier. Now, looking at the middle section of the application, we've got four different windows. The one you see over here on the left-hand side is band activity. So any stations that you hear and decode will all show up over here on the left-hand side. If someone is calling CQ, it will show up in green. If you're getting a directed message, those will show up in red. In the middle section, we've got two different boxes, the tan colored one and the white one. The white one is simply where you're going to type your outgoing message. The one in tan is messages that are either directed to you or with a station that you've lined up with on the waterfall. The last thing that will show up here is once you've typed an outgoing message in the white box and you've hit the send button, you will see that those messages, uh, your outgoing messages, show up here in red. Over on the right-hand side, we've got the heard call sign uh, list. So any stations that we've heard will populate in this list. And you can sort these in a few different ways. If you come up to this line right here and you right-click on that, you can say to sort the columns by a particular thing. I keep mine by last heard timestamp with the most recent being first. So the latest stations I've heard are always at the top of the list. Now you will also notice some stars beside certain call signs. What that is, is that verifies that I have heard them and they have also heard me. One other symbol that you may see over here in your call sign list is a black flag in place of the star. That black flag would indicate that you have a message from that particular station. And the easiest way to see that is to hover over the call sign that you want to see the message from. You would right click and then click show message inbox and in this particular case it's grayed out because I don't have any messages from that particular station and we'll kind of go over messages in a future video. Now let's look at this row of buttons that separates the main part of the application from the waterfall. The first one you'll see over on the far left hand side is the heartbeat uh, button. Now, if I left click on this, that actually turns the heartbeat off. If I left click on it again, it turns it on. And you'll see the countdown timer right there. We can set how often our heartbeat is going out by right clicking and then choosing how often we want it to go out. Now, I prefer to leave it at 30 minutes. Anything more than that just seems a little bit excessive to me. So every 30 minutes is good. The CQ button is used when you want to call CQ. Now that button ties back in to what we saw uh, when we were looking at the settings. So you could change exactly what you wanted in your CQ message inside the settings. The same thing for the reply and the SNR. Mine are grayed out because I don't have a station selected right now that I want to reply to, but you can change what happens when you click on these buttons inside the settings. The next button, uh, or the next two buttons are very similar in info and status. Again, those are just kind of quick shortcuts to various things that you might utilize during a QSO. And then we can also 
create saved messages. So if we type a message here, let's just do this. Let's just do a quick uh, test message. And then we can click on this and then click saved current message. So if I save that current message, and then I'm just going to go ahead and take this message out. If I wanted to resend that test message, I can simply grab the drop-down box here on the Saved button and then click Test Message. It would go ahead and highlight that. Better stop that. I actually didn't want that to transmit out. Uh, but it'll go ahead and populate that here in your outgoing message and send that out for you. Finally, we have the waterfall section. Now, just to the left of the waterfall, you will see this little meter here. This indicates your sound level coming into JS8 Call, and you can manipulate this with your sound card settings inside of the Raspberry Pi. The waterfall itself will show you where signals are coming in at. And then to the right of that, we've got some other controls over here. Uh, some controls for the waterfall, how the waterfall is displayed, and finally, the timing of JS8 Call. Last but not least, we have the power output slider over here on the far right-hand side. So we can adjust our transmit audio level. Now, if you wanted to start a QSO with a particular station, it's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is highlight the call sign that we want to start the conversation with, and then go down to the outgoing message box and go ahead and compose our message. Then we can hit the send button once we've composed that message, and then wait for the other operator to reply. Okay, guys, well, there you have it. There's an overview of JSA Call. Hopefully, over the next video or two, we can get into a little bit more depth of the application and how to use some of those special features that JSA Call offers. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.